When dealing with solutions, one of the uh, issues that many students run into is that they're not sure what state to write for uh, the products of any chemical reaction. Uh, or if you are putting something in solution, what do you write? And so the purpose of this <coughs> scribblecast is just to show you how you can use solubility tables in order to determine whether something is a solid uh, or aqueous. So, uh, for example here, if I dump salt in water, what do I say that that subscript or that state is? Do I identify it as a solid? Or, since it sort of disappears or dissolves or, more appropriately, dissociates, uh, should I write it as aqueous? So what we want to do in this Scribblecast is show you how to determine whether you have a solid or whether you have aqueous. There's one thing that uh, we're, we always give you, uh, and that is a data booklet, or you buy it. And in the data booklet, there's always something called a solubility table. And so this, really the purpose uh, of this Scribblecast is to show you how to use one of these solubility tables. And what you do, if you have something like sodium chloride, and if, if you dump that in water and you want to know what the state of that is, what you do is you look at each of the ions that are there. This is the cation, that's always the positively charged ion, and this is the anion. And you look for those ions separately in the chart. What I always do is look for them on the top row. So I look for sodium or I look for the chloride ion on the top row. Once I've found it on the top row, here's the chloride, um, then you look down either in this one, in that section, or in this section to look for the other ion that is hooked up with it. So if I found chloride on the top row, then I would look for sodium on this uh, row or on this row. Okay, so if it's on this one, then we would say it's aqueous. They don't have that written on the chart usually. But if, they, if it's on this row, then I would write solid. Let's try it with a couple of um, different examples. So here's back to our salt example. So if I dump salt as a solid in water, what state would it be? Is it going to be aqueous or is it going to be solid? We probably think it's aqueous, but let's just check. So, I have sodium and chloride. I look for those up here somewhere. Here's the chloride ion, and I come down, and it says most are aqueous. So, what does that, what does that say? How do I know? I guess the way I know if it falls in this category not, or not is if it's in this section. So, I found chloride. Now, I look for sodium. Sodium could be in most. Let's see down here. Sodium's not found there, therefore sodium must be in here. So, if I have sodium and chloride together in solution, the state that I should write is aqueous. So right here, I would write AQ. Let's try another one. Maybe on this one, you might want to pause the recording and just see if you can do this one on your own. Once, you, once you've got your answer, then press play and see if you get it right. Okay, so I'm looking for magnesium and hydroxide. Uh, magnesium, here's hydroxide right there. So anything that's in group one, ammonium, strontium, barium, or tellurium, whatever TL is, if those hook up with hydroxide, it's aqueous. Otherwise, everything else is a solid. Now, group one bothers me a little bit. Is magnesium in group one? If you look on the periodic table, group one is, here's sort of the periodic table, something like that, and group one are the ones in the first column, okay, just the first column. You'll find magnesium is not in there, and neither is it any one of these, so magnesium must be in this section, making magnesium hydroxide a solid when you dump it in water. Okay, hopefully you're catching. Let's try another couple. Again, pause, try it on your own, come back, see if you're right. Okay, we're back. All right, so uh, sodium nitrate, dump that in water. So sodium and nitrate, sodium and nitrate, sodium and nitrate. Oh, here's nitrate right there. 
so there's nitrate. All, oh, so anything that hooks up with a nitrate is always aqueous. Oh, that's sort of a nice thing to know. Okay, so aqueous. Let's try one last one. Again, do your pause thing, then come back. Barium sulfate. Sulfate, sulfate's right there. Most are um, aqueous, except for... Oh, look at this. Here's our exception right there. Barium and sulfate. That's what we have up there. If I dump those in water at 298.15 Kelvin, which is about, I don't know, 20 some Celsius, 23 Celsius, something like that, um, or 25 Celsius, uh, then it's a solid. Okay, so barium and sulfate, if they are in solution, they will be a solid. Okay, so hopefully that gives you an idea of how you can use solubility tables. It's a great idea every time you write a chemical equation, say if I was um, reacting sodium with uh, chlorine, this is a different reaction that, we, that we've done, uh, to produce sodium chloride. A couple of things that are always great to include. I like to put a line in front of each of those just to remind myself that I have to balance that chemical equation. And I also like to put brackets behind each one of these uh, to indicate that I should have uh, some kind of a state in there. And that state, knowing what state things are in, if things are in solution, the solubility table thing that we just did uh, will help you figure that out. Okay, hope that helps. Uh, uh, if you still have some questions, read your book. Uh, you can also contact your instructor.